Hey there viewers and welcome back to the self made auto channel got us a 2013 chevrolet sonic needs a ball joint front brakes and a wheel bearing <laughs> Because we're doing brakes and wheel bearing and a ball joint, we will pull the caliper loose. Little tiny bolts in these, little 10 millimeter head. So be careful of them suckers. Take them off. We'll peel our caliper up off here. Let's see if we can push our piston back. Now these are phenolic, so be careful what you're reaching in here with. You can crack the piston pretty easy. Phenolic is code word for plastic of some sort. Phenolic with a pH. And we're going to hook our caliper up out of the way and then we'll buzz our bracket off. I want to hit your tootsies. Tap the rotor off, she's usually pretty stuck. No, we will not be reusing it. We just went code red. I do not have an axle nut socket with a thin enough wall to clear inside this hub because it extends out past the axle nut. And I don't have any chrome sockets large enough. So I want to see if we can figure out what size it is. I think it's a 35. So I'm getting 35 and a half millimeters, so 35 or 36. Yeah, 35 and a half. I'm going to go to my brother's shop. And we're back. It's going to be a tight fit, so we're going to loop it up. I got us a 36 thinner wall. He didn't have any chrome, but his 36 is thinner than mine and it just fits. That's all we needed, just like that. A little tap, that's good. Now we'll pull the hub off with the slide hammer and then we'll do the ball joint. One. Just got to pull this shield off so we don't uh, damage it when we do the ball joint. It's easier just to get it out of the way. Don't forget to put it on though. Pull the bolt out of the lower ball joint now. junk so we're gonna break out the old pickle Come out easier. This is like a so. We got the old hockey stick on it. I'm gonna hang a brake rotor off the back of the hockey stick. That should give us just enough weight. However, we need to. Well, we could carry it out. We could do the wheel bearing at this point. I'm gonna work on getting the ball joint out 
factory, these things are riveted. So one way or another, you gotta get the rivets off. I'm gonna use a torch. I'm gonna go on the bottom side so we don't hit the control arm, nick them off, stick it back into the knuckle, and then whack them out with the air hammer, but let's see, I'm gonna give it a shot. Music, you know it's coming. Big nasty. So I'm gonna take, line it back up in the knuckle, go for the inner two. When you get two out, the last one's always kind of wobbly, you kind of gotta hold it, and they, they should pop out though, technically. Trim that one a little bit more. is out of the way we'll finish off the bearing so we'll just pull our cv shaft out make sure the control arm's not you know smoldering hot so you don't melt your cv boot but i just like to hook a strap on it so it kind of holds it out of the way for me so we can get back in and do our business we're an axle everything's kind of hanging there should be a snap ring Gosh, don't tell me it's on the back side because the speed sensor is back here. Son of a monkey. The speed sensor has to come out of this one. So the speed sensor goes down through the snap rings on the back side. So that means we have to push the bearing through, which sucks because the speed sensor has to come out. And I did not buy a new one. And speed sensors rarely come out in the People's Republic of New York because of the salt. So this should be educational. I don't know what size it is. It's an Allen socket. And <laughs> it's five millimeters. First try. Now I need a ratchet of some sort. Hey, the bolt came out. That's a plus. So usually the plastic speed sensor is, you know, stuck in the knuckle. Maybe, just maybe, when Daewoo made this little guy, they left enough room around it that we can just wiggle it and she'll pop right out of there. Usually you give them a wiggle, they just snap in half. It is not looking promising. This sucks. Yeah, let's not complain about it. Let's, let's try it. Everybody send your good vibes. Okay, so it wiggles. Let me see if the other end of it's wiggling. And it is. Hallelujah. There's going to be an O-ring on it. And that's usually where they bind up. 
and then snap off. Oh my goodness gracious, I think. shown down from the heavens. So why did this one come out? It's because it's because they splined it. So this one actually sits on four splines as opposed to just tighten the hole with an o-ring. Wow, I might go buy me a day woo. Not really. All right, so now we have to get the snap ring out, but we have to save the snap ring because we have to reuse it. So we're gonna see if we can grab it with snap ring pliers. I cannot believe that speed sensor came out. Let's see here. Get in there, fella. Oh, did one side just move? It did. It's gonna be a freaking miracle. This is the miracle car. I'm getting really lucky your PV blaster works or a combination thereof or it's the good vibes that you guys are sending come on you little sucker I thought I cracked the top side loose clearly it did not I don't want to tweak the snap ring a whole lot if I can avoid it. Because like I say, we do need to reuse it. A lot of times you get half of it out, then you can work it in a circular fashion. And then we'll pop out the rest of the way. There it goes, we got her. And winner, so there's that. Now, because our outer race out here that you can't see is still stuck on the spindle. We need something to push on. So what we'll do is we'll pop the inner one off and use that for the outer. If I can find something to hit on it, we got a big nasty bit here. We'll give her a little tap. That's not working for me. <laughs> Try to slow down here, fella. Ah, there we go. Quit being a Sally. So then I'm going to take, it's interesting, man, this bearing is humming like crazy. But it still looks like it has a lot of grease in it. I know it was the driver's side because I was running it on the lift. Maybe it's the outer race that's beat up. Because the inner race is here. I don't think they look too bad. I don't see any falling on them or pits. Interesting, hopefully. Hopefully I'm right, I ran it on the lift. You could hear this side make a noise like a banshee. Yeah, you know how noisy banshees are. All right, so there's that. Make sure when you're doing these and you put them in, you put them in the correct way because on the inside they have the magnetic tone ring. So you don't want to botch that up. We'll get the hub tamer, grappler, get the cones we need gonna be kind of a pisser because it's a little bit of a taper right here find a cone it's gonna hit it just so and press her out I think we have the right combination find out here in a moment I don't want to do because I don't want to have to beat it out when it's fully pressed in. 
know what I mean? So what we'll do, I don't know if I can use the other non-tapered side. I'm gonna go the next cup bigger. Next size up. Oh, this one's already tweaked because I've already beat the crap out of that. Da, 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 da. Let me see. Bear with me, folks. All right, that worked good enough. Like I said, I got a taper on this one because I used it for something it wasn't supposed to be used for, I imagine. It's usually how stuff happens. But I think we'll be okay. Famous last words, right? It's always okay till it's not. That's what I always say. That's an old Ben Franklin quote. 1746. Sensors out of the way. And here we go. Dennis pick. I want to clean out the groove where the snap ring goes. Lovely sound, right? Especially for our he headphone users. Give a little extra for you. Now we will flush it out, of course. Sponsor. We'll open this up. Ooh, it's got some paperwork with it. Probably tells us not to put it in backwards. They're usually pretty obvious. So you've got the metal seal on one side, the side it faces out, and then the magnetic ring for the ABS on the other side. So don't mess that up. I'll get all of our kibbles and bits we need to push it back in, and we'll get her squeezed in there. Make sure it goes the right way. Probably already said that once or ten times. I only say it because I've probably put one in backwards before. More than likely. And if you have, well, hopefully you learned your lesson. direction. I'm going to go use Roger, wire wheel this up so she's bright and shiny. 
and we'll snap that back in, put our speed sensor back in. We will get the other race off from this so we can reuse it, which I'll probably just maybe nick it off with a torch or something, and uh, we'll be good. Did, was that opening at the speed sensor? Well, the speed sensor will fit regardless of where the snap ring is, right? Ah, it will not. Oh, good to know, fella. Good to know. GTN for you texters. No, GTK. I don't even know how to spell the word no. So the slot in the snap ring has to go up here. Wow. Okay, our snap ring is in, and now the speed sensor will fit down into the groove. What you lucky, lucky. That's some fine Korean engineering. We'll give that a little two to the fluid film. On the snap ring. And of course up in the hole where the speed sensor goes. Slip that baby back in. And now we can stick the bolt back in. And we'll snug that up to factory specs, of course. Whatever they may be. Find a ratchet. I'm always losing ratchets, I swear. Wherever it is, it's probably got a 10 millimeter hook to it. All right, snug. That's good. Grab a cloth. Give this a little wipe down. Make sure we don't have any foreign particles stuck to it. That's too slippery. All right, we're good to go. She's good back here. Okay, so there's a ton of ways that you can take the races off. A lot of people will take a cutoff wheel, they'll, they'll notch them, take a cold chisel, hit it, these things will break like glass. Uh, I've seen guys take and just heat them up, heat them up, heat them up, and then, you know, eventually shake them off. Or you just take the torch, we'll cut a little notch across it, and then, uh, you know, give it a little, little touch with the air hammer, and she should come off. So pick your poison. There's always a metallurgist in the crowd, though, that doesn't like one way or the other. What's going on here? There we go. Shaft. I don't know what you guys could see while I was doing it, but you just you blaze across it. You just nick the top off, and that's going to relieve enough tension. We get behind there with the air hammer, and usually you just give them a little two. Make sure you put on your safety squints because, like I said, they are glass hard. They will get you, usually right in the lookers, too. We will grab the weakest air hammer known to man, the Mac Tools air hammer. Not a lot of beans in these guys. Let's see if we can get behind her here. But not a lot of beans are needed. <laughs> Maybe a few more than what we have. Oh, don't get your fingers. Come on. You know that whole monkey in the football story? I don't know that story. I can't tell it on YouTube. Uh, you don't, you know. So you can get it off, everything's good. Just gotta polish her up. So there, once that's off, like I said, I just went and polished her up. The little nick on there is from my air hammer. Must be the uh, chisel went across there. It's not a huge deal, so don't get too wound up about it. You could probably take a little piece of emery cloth and, you know, if you're into polishing your hub, I guess. It's not gonna make a difference one way or the other. We need to back up this bearing on the back side without hitting your speed sensor if you already foolishly put it in. What we have to do, and then we're just gonna press this guy in. I can find all my pieces. There they are. 
We'll just press it in. Snap rings on. There's no reason why you can't, right? Don't hit your speed sensor. You already put it in. Running behind today, fellas. Here we go. Guess what I forgot? The freaking shield. And it's too late now. But it's okay, it's slotted. We'll get it around there. Not a big deal. So our bearing's in. Whee! Put that out of the way. Ah, look at that, see? Now if that was any other style, we'd be really upset right now. But this one, fortunately, is notched out. Some of them have to go over, you know. You know. Let's see. Where we Get the tools. Out of cart space. You're going to want to go to a torque setting number one. And be ginger. These are fragile. It's all about trigger control. So while we're right here, we're gonna install the new ball joint. I'll grab it out of the box here, so I got that. So here's the new ball joint from Napper. Again, not a sponsor of the show. It does come with, uh, it's gonna have three new bolts and nuts to go on the bottom, the grease fitting, and then the new pinch bolt. So I will grab those little guys, which we have right here. Set it down. And I like to put the bolts down through from the top side, and we'll uh, put the nuts on it. How many? Bofa. Bofa days nuts. There's that. What size do we have here? 15. 15 on the bottom, and I think she's 14-ish. 14 on the top. Setting number three. There. That's that. We'll leave our hockey stick right on there. Is that going to move? Yes, that moves. Okay. And then while we're right here, give her a little shot of fluid film in there. We'll pull her back. Line her up in the hole. Wiggle it in. Move our caliper. Get control of the stick. Film up in there. All right, make it easy for the next guy. Line that up. Down. Get a real hammer. Just very ginger. No, don't go crazy. Line up the schlot. Once that's lined up, then we'll stick our bolt back in. Mm -hmm. Is this the way it went? Yeah? No, let me look on the other side. Yeah, that's the way it will go. I guess it really doesn't matter in the big picture. However, I'm seeing something I don't like. We have a fold in our boot. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the grease fitting in it. We're going to give her a little couple little toots before we get too far. That way our boot doesn't end up folded up and ripping on us. You know what I mean? So to do that, we'll pop her back down a schmidge. 
give her some grease from my grease gun that is conveniently hanging over here. There she is. Now don't go hog wild with this. Just enough to puff her up. Puff, baby. Right, that's probably got enough grease in it. So what we'll do is we'll come up with it, and it should. The grease should, you know, take the space, which it's not. What the heck do I know? Come on, sucker. We'll give her some more. I don't want to over grease it because then when we push it in, it makes a mess. Yeah, I think she's starting to puff now. Right. Oh, look at that. Almost like we know what we're doing. Snug. Are you not 15? It's 15. Thunder. 15's bigger sister, number 16. Whoa, fella. You can't go that way with a short socket. Oh my gosh. So we'll go this way. Golden. And then, last but not least, <laughs> the axle nut. Now people are going to be concerned because it has already has the stakeout broken it. So you put these on, you smash them in. I noticed before I took it apart, the CV shaft has two notches in it. So we will just use the opposite side wherever it may land. Now, Free Tip Friday Mima taught me one time if you're doing this and you don't have a new axle nut and it ends up lining up on the exact spot and you're worried about it, take the axle nut off the other side, swap them around, you know what I mean? And then nine out of 10 times, but not every time, it'll line up on a spot that you can actually peen over. So you just learned something new. So we're gonna take, I gotta get the torque spec on this. And we'll torque this baby down and see where it lands. It's probably, Gonna land right back about where it was, maybe. Oh, this is handy. She's angle torqued. So this is 37 foot pounds and then 60 degrees. So there's our 37. Now the 60 degrees can be a dilemma. What we will do, it's gonna line right back the other notch. Let me mark it just in case my wrench slips. So there's where we started. 90 degrees is going to be, you know, directly over here. So 60 is going to be, well, let's see, that's 90, half is going to be 45. So I'm going to say 60 is going to be right about there, roughly. Let me get a screwdriver. Screwdriver slash eight foot bar. And let's see, we're going to be turning that direction. So can we just stick this up on the lift? No, we can't. Why? Because it'll be right in my way. That boom. So now we'll set up our torque wrench here. We're using the snap on tech angle, built in angle finder. It's already at 90 degrees. Let's see if this works without killing somebody. No, we don't want 90. Crap, and I just went seven. <laughs> uh, I suck at this. So what's that? What's 60? Okay, so we're gonna go another 53 degrees, right? Does that make sense? We already went seven. Three and seven is ten, and ten and fifty is sixty. And here we go. And here's forty-four. Whoa. And look, 
or weight dot almost lines up with the weight smudge I put on there. So that's 60 degrees and it ended up being 206.9 foot pounds. Pound feet of torque. Get rid of my screwdriver. So now that that's taken care of, like I said, you can see the stake mark. We're a little bit past, probably, or close to where it used to be. We're just going to beat it down in this section here. It's a pretty thick lip. I don't know if I can get it with this little hammer, but we'll give it a whirl. There we are. Boom. Yeah, we're, we're right in the middle of our hustle. We will finish the brakes because I think that's what we came here to do. Did I just do that? Oh my gosh, where's my brain? Where's my brain? I prematurely fluid filmed. No fear though. Brake cleaner will do its job. I gotta clean that little rust ring off. screw and she is brand new rotor from napper not a sponsor they should be i did not get the coated rotors for this one it's got the plain old plain old the plain old plain janers with the blue stuff on them is that the size oh yeah first try got the torque wrench Torque setting number one. Be ginger. That's good enough. I'll slightly turn it to the side. All right, we'll have a look at our caliper. Phenolic ones are always nice and clean. Ears in there look pretty good. Cool. We're going to give the caliper a little squeeze back. Now make sure that your brake fluid reservoir is not heaping full because otherwise you're going to make a mess. If it is, go ahead and suck some of the brake fluid out of it. So we're just going to push this back in until it stops. should move in nice and easy. We're in. Slides in. Da, 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 da. Now we still got to clean up our caliper bracket. So we'll give them a squeeze. The brake squealers go on the inside and towards the top. So we'll pop our pads off, remove our hardware. Mm. Don't let it cut you. I'm going to go throw it in the sandblaster. I'm going to make sure our pins are free. You guys have seen this a bazillion times already. Check them out, make sure they're nice and greased. We will apply lubricant to them if needed. Both of these look fantastic at a glance. Sandblast it, polish her up on Roger, and we'll throw some new pads on. Over here on the cart of doom. We'll take a little caliper grease into the areas that we just polished. So nice. This will help keep them from getting all crusty again. At least slow down the process. Of course, you know you guys have seen me do this. If you're new to the channel, this is our MO. Loop them up behind the clips, which, you know, you might, depend on where you live, you know, you may never have to do this because you might not have the white pennies from heaven that fall down on us here. We're going to stick our new hardware on. 
which is always our habit. Always use new hardware. So there's that. Now these hardware clips, see they have these little locks on the outside. It makes it, I don't want to say impossible, but very difficult to slide the pad in from the outside. So we're going to go from the inside out. Oh, you ding dong, grabbed the wrong pad. I got the right one now. Oddly enough, the both pads that have the squealers on, the one that goes on this side, one that goes on the other side, the squealer's in the same position. So over on the other side, the squealer is on the inside and towards the top. I told you to do it that way on this side, but frankly, it really doesn't 100% matter. I know on the ASC test, if you take that, it will, you know, the leading edge or trailing edge or this or that. Fact is, when the metal hits the rotor, it's going to squeal. So there we go. We've got our inside. Now your outside pad is constructed slightly different on these. They have this little extra wing off them. So, you know, keep that in mind when you're doing this. The, and you don't have to worry about it because you'll find the same situation I was just in. The pad that belongs on the outside, it will not fit inside on the inside of the bracket. It'll actually hit. So you can't really screw it up unless you have like a grinder or something. Now we'll just hang the bracket with the pads installed back up on the knuckle. Get that started. What's up, Mrs. O? Oh, gas and visitors. Oh my gosh, is it another freaking YouTuber? <laughs> is it? I don't know, you have to go and see. Okay, uh, uno momento. Man, we're just trying to get this done. I'm so far behind. Doesn't that leave one car by two? The other one is on the lot. One of the other 50 that are out there. Huh? That's what you told her. Oh my gosh, I gotta get my game on. All right, second YouTube visitor of the day. This one come bearing donuts. The one yesterday also come bearing donuts. They must know I like donuts. But the one from yesterday, I put heads on his Hemi Dodge, or Hemi Jeep, did a head job on a 06 Commander. It's a big 5.7 Hemi, and he brings me donuts from Buffalo, this uh, bakery up in Buffalo. And these things are insane. They're humongous. It's like if you took two donuts, put cream in the middle, and then put them together, and then deep fried the whole batch of goodness. Oh, they're so good. But they make my heart pound, which I think is probably not good. Either way, these guys just drove up from Pittsburgh, stop in and say hello. I did tighten up the bracket for those of you that are concerned. Stick the bolt in. We're going to slip her down. Like that. We will take and put these bolts in. We'll snug this up. I think we've done everything. Ball joints are done. Wheel bearing is done. What'd you say, Miss Though? So. Oh my gosh. Oh, uh, it's like reality show, isn't it? What? It's like a reality show, isn't it? Yeah. A time crunch. Customers mad. People stopping in. Cars not getting finished. Yep. Got it all on camera. And you got a lot to do. And I got a whole freaking lot full of cars. Should I throw something? That's what they do on TV, right? There we go, yeehaw. All right, brakes are on. Axle nut is torque, wheel bearings in, snap rings on, ABS is back in. Ball joint is on and tight and through bolt. Other side is done. I think that's it. Turned out really nice. Well, folks, as you've heard, time is of the essence here. I am way behind. This baby's done. We did the wheel bearing, we did the ball joint, we did the brakes. Of course, I've done the brakes on the other side. So now I'm just gonna install the wheels, torque them to factory specs, pump up the brakes, check the brake fluid, make sure it's full, take it for a little toot around town, make sure the wheel bearing is no longer screaming, which it shouldn't be, and uh, we'll call it a date. I wish I could take you with me, but I'm out of time. Hope you enjoyed the video. Go down there in the comment box, leave your questions, comments, criticisms, and concerns. And just remember viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.